Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the official PokerStars channel. We're live once again. It's Tuesday, and it's another Spin and Go session with your boy, Nick Walsh. We back. Let's do it. All right, we got a 4X to start. We haven't seen any really big multipliers in a little while, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some exciting ones today, and then we can probably just push this as well. Might be okay to still include this as a min raise because we're still going to call off a shove, right? In some cases, we do incentivize some weaker aces to jam here too. Against two, we can actually get away. We're going to call the initial shove over here though most of the time. And we would have got it spot on correct. We actually did extremely well there to um, to target that exact three bet jamming range with the ace eight suited. I think we've done the right thing by folding, of course, against two. That seems perfectly reasonable. But otherwise, I think we've... Uh, I think we're headed in the right direction there. And obviously got getting a good feel for the way those hands are going to play out. All right, guys, who wants it today? Who wants it? Wait for the presence to land. Let's make the call. All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. But yeah, I have, I have a couple ideas. There's a, there's a couple tools I think you should probably think about using immediately. And I think also in terms of, you know, some pre-flop course material and stuff like that. Team Bass is great. There's going to be some free stuff coming from Stars soon as well that you're going to like. But we can chat about it in more detail over there. All right, guys. So we lose our flip for the win, basically. But we can still spin it up. Eight, nine of clubs. Absolute monster here. No good on this occasion. And, of course, a call here with the ace, deuce of diamonds. Not really too much science to it. Just a pretty hand and very few big blinds. Important to note that our opponent is really short here, though, of course. That will adjust their range. And the deuces that never loses. Just the ship. Love to see lots of folds under these circumstances if we can. All right. 20 bucks in the bag. There we go. Not too shabby. Next game, please. I think it's okay to deviate when you're a little bit on the deeper side, when you got some more wiggle room to actually like make some other moves. But um, under those circumstances, I think we gotta just we gotta just get the chips in and just go for it when we know it's gonna it's gonna profit long run. That's unfortunate. Boone kind of running into it twice again. It's not really a whole lot whole lot of science to it. Um, let's be in this pot. We're not gonna bluff the dry pot though. Hello, Jim Lad. How you doing? Yeah, this is a weird line from this individual. Don't really know why they're bluffing a dry pot there. They're in position. They get to showdown with what is going to be the best hand with an eight or a four or a heart a lot of the time. It just doesn't benefit them to potentially eliminate me from the pot when we could have eliminated another player and gotten close to the cash. So ace nine, obviously just ace high. I have two live cards. They have two live cards and the flush draw. By getting us out of the pot, the amount that they win in the side pot is very small. And um, yeah, this is fine. By eliminating us from the pot, though, the amount that they win in the side pot, if they are losing to the other opponent, which of course they are a lot with eight high, is not a good situation. Um, I think we definitely just flat here. So they check the flop, they bet one on the turn, now they're betting four on the river. Oh, this feels bad. This feels really, really bad. I'm a bit concerned as to why they didn't just bet the flop here, to be honest. Seems like a very easy flop to bluff on, right? Oh, that was an exceedingly tight fold, but I'm going to go with my gut here. I'm going to go with the gut, you guys. Going to trust my instincts on that one. That one felt very, very, very sad for us. And this one is fine just to push. So far, I've been pretty aggressive, this individual. So I think we're fine just to take the insta-profit shove. And two live cards. That's fine. Any straights about. Or a four. That's cool, too. And ace five suited, calling the shove all day. Down to 2.8, big blinds total. Ooh. We can actually let this one go. This is right at the very bottom. And then obviously have to call basically any reasonably looking hand, reasonable looking hand here, six, seven included. 
Running into Kings under six big blinds effective. Is anyone shocked? Is anybody, anybody shocked to hear about that, guys? Is anybody in the chat actually going to be shocked to uh, to see that? This one's fine too. Queen deuce, spades uh, under seven seems fine. Pretty much what we're going to do most of the time, I imagine. And ace king. Don't we don't do too much trapping at this point, guys? We're a little bit too shallow. There's already quite a lot of dead money in relation to the effective stack, so we just get it in and hope for the best. Ace eight definitely a call though. Pretty, pretty reasonable play from uh, Gadezas here. Do we get rewarded immediately? No messing around here, guys. Give him the Santa first. Wait for the presents. Go for all of it. That's reasonable. Noise. I think. Three betting ace ten and getting that in is probably not the end of the world in the grand scheme of things. But we will be attacking this limp extremely aggressively. Eight four off. Super, super wide ISO here. Gets it done. Push boind be boind here. Nice. And Ace Jack is going to be in the middle here a lot of the time. Uh, at this stack depth, it's probably one of the one of the ones where we have it in our extra large ISO size. So four eight twelve is one third of the effective stack. Do the same thing with Ace Queen Ace King, and then we'll balance it with some other stuff. That's part of our advanced uh, heads up strategy that we developed for my chart pack and the advanced pack. This time, we're going to call the shove if they rip it here, guys, because we're actually going to trap a lot more king combos, queen combos that like to shove versus limp. Once we get to a certain stack depth, king jack is just a mandatory limp call. It's just too good. Running into ace three, we don't really lose too much in terms of uh, EV. It's uh, one of those spots where we're going to do totally fine, obviously, and obviously trap quite a few combos as well, which is nice. Can we get any value from aces here? Okay, so I think how we would usually approach this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Something like that. Calling it off, of course. Beautiful. I think that's a pretty well played hand. I think we might do something similar in their shoes and then jack nine, especially against an opponent then sh that's shown themselves to be quite aggressive. Just the rip with jack nine seems fine under under seven. Big blinds effective. And jack 10 has gotta be a call here. There's always gonna call here against any opponent type really, unless we know that they're, they're super duper tight. Just gonna have so much equity pre-flop. We don't win the all-in, but again, another opportunity to win with tons of equity. Good opportunity to uh, to win the game right there. Um, I think we can do a bit of everything here. We're just going to have the best hand here a ton of the time with the king high. Hmm. You know, you hate to give him a free card here, but it's just one of those, I think. Can we even get him to call for the chop pot on the river, guys? Can we get him to call for the 10, 10, 8, 8? <laughs> Got absolutely value town. To be fair, not really expecting him to check back that combo on the river, but getting too clever for our own good, I guess. I like it, though. I like it a lot. I, I think those are spots where we actually usually end up making more 
we usually end up sneaking in a couple, a couple extra big blinds that our friends just don't have. So Jack seven's getting pretty close to just a shove here, guys. I think we're going to sneak it in as limp. So we shove versus limp here. We fold versus all in. 10-3, just a bit too wide for a limp here. If we think our opponent is shoving enough, if they're just checking back tons, we can still sneak in there really wide as we get shallower. Not really the combo to have a check raise or do anything fancy. Just get out of the way. Don't need to mess around there. Deuce five again, right at the very bottom of our range. We can fold some of that stuff. Don't want to play 100% if our opponent is doing the right stuff. Pre-flop. So jack high, backdoor diamonds, backdoor straight draw. If he's not going to bet, do we lead this turn? Don't love it. Don't love it. Don't love it. King D's still sneaking in with the limp. Not the worst flop in the world. Do we ever find a check here? Pretty unbalanced to find a check. I mean, not really. We're going to check some of our six combos as well. Let's give it a go. Okay, so we want to keep them on the hook here, obviously. Improving into diamonds would be fantastic. If they improve into a straight, that'd be fantastic. So, does the check on the flop get us a, a hero call on the river? Ooh, okay, we'll take it. Nay bad, nay bad, nay bad. Nay bad at all. So this is any two cards, guys. Anything under 2.6 big blinds effective, we are going to call any two, including seven deuce, which is at the very bottom, of course. Two live cards. No good. Yo, Lenbot, what's up? Welcome. Uh, yeah, we got to get this one in as well, guys. Nine deuce. It's only two big blinds total. Just got to get it in. Hope for the best. Two live cards once again. Find the chop. Yo, peace and love. Thank you very much for the uh, for the sub. How was your stream today, bud? And again, under 2.6, guys. Any two cards gamble. Can we actually win one of our one of our two live card spot? There it is. Happy days. 40 bucks in the bank. Not too bad. Pocket Kings is a good hand. Oh, okay, cool. Best of luck to your friend of stream. Wait for the presents. They all have to be delivered. There we go. He bought the chart pack. He's winning this pot. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, not the presents. <laughs> oh, too good, too good. All right, King Jack of Diamonds, blind v. blind. We're definitely calling a push here. Wish me luck, guys. We didn't let the presence drop this time, though. Nice to meet you, buddy. Until next time. Don't know this guy, Tommy Gull. So let's take it nice and slow here. Let's see if we can't sneak out a couple extra chippies. It's been a while since we played in chips. Let's play in chips for a little while. Playing chips for a little while. And if you don't know, now you know, Pocket Kings. We should we should have given him the presents first, but there we go. What do we get? That's what we get. Oh my God, we didn't give him the presents, you guys. Yeah, thank you for asking, Tom. Uh, do we check raise this board? This is probably very reasonable to check raise. 
four, five, six, seven, eight. We probably just get the lot on the turn anyway, mostly, right? It was all a dream. When people size up on the flop, they always continue, don't they? Quality speakers for sure. Oh, there's the picture in the chat if you guys want to take a look. I think we shove turn, guys. We're going to get the lot. I think Jack 10 probably got a call here now, guys. We're getting a little bit too shallow. Don't know this guy personally, but we're like seven big blinds effective. It's just a little bit too good to fold. We're going to have so much equity in most cases. And of course, we're going to river the straight easy game. And at this point, we probably take the spot as well, I imagine. The shove here is going to be redonkulously wide. Wish me luck. Here we go. Easy king. Easy king. No dice. Plenty of equity, though. All right. The heads up match of the century. The heads up match of the century. Can we pull it off? All right, getting way more walks than we probably should as well at the minute, which is great. So our opponent shouldn't have a king that often here. Uh, they will sometimes if they're inexperienced because they won't be shoving as many of their king combos as they should. But I think we're supposed to play this as though we have basically top pair. This works for me. This is fine for me. And on the river, do we just play it safe? Potentially. Definitely kind of a dangerous run out here. All right. Nice. But we've done very well to get two streets of value from that combo there where a lot of people might just miss the flop bet or not, uh, not follow through on the turn. Definitely an edge there without question. Snap check on the flop here, interesting. Jack high for the win on the river. King high feels like king high when they're snap checking on those textures for sure. And here we are, King Jack. So let's do a classico ISO. Big old ISO, we're calling the shove, of course. Queen eight, we just push. Against this guy who's been really passive, I think we probably can get away with sneaking in more limps though, where we could, we need to, uh, we're not as concerned about, um, you know, denying them the opportunity to outplay us. I think we just ship the turn now. Obviously, any jack or two pair plus is gonna call. The diamond's probably still somewhat priced in. Seems like a pretty magical spot. If not, we take it all 100%. Not quite. And ace three FTW potentially. Nine ten, just always a shove here, guys. Never miss this spot. Three big blinds or whatever it is. Got to go and get it in. No good. Under six big blinds effective. This is gonna be a good game for us guys. Lots and lots of folding. We're gonna win loads and loads and loads at non-showdown here. Oh my days, so much at non-showdown. Jack five, definitely a push here as well. So much at non-showdown. So much at non-showdown. Huge game for us. Huge game. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Hope you have a fantastic uh, Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow. 
for more uh, poker content. And yeah, ciao for now.